Our next caller is Nick from Ontario. Hey, Nick, how can we help you? Hi. Um, first off, I've been listening for a year. You guys are hilarious, and I love your show. Just thought I'd say that now. Thanks. Get that out of the way. Um, I have been having issues with my hamstring ever since they did ACL surgery on my right knee. So they had to take some hamstring tendon to redo the ACL. That would have been five fish years ago. Um, and then anytime I was doing any sort of hip hinging drills, um, I would have more of a stretch on the left side mm. or sorry, I'd have yeah more of a stretch on the left side because the right run was weak. Um, I've pulled it a couple times when I first had the surgery and one of the physios said that they thought I had a recoil in it, um, which whoever knows what that means. And then it's kind of like, um, manifest into needing hip surgery two years ago because it threw off my hips and then my left hip had um, a impingement. So then that ended up tearing some of the labrum. So yeah, I've had all these little issues and I'm always trying to work on it kind of a little bit of a perfectionist and I just can't get my right hamstring specifically the inside part of my hamstring strong um, so yeah, I thought I'd reach out to you guys. Okay. So, uh, little, little context for the listener. So uh, this is a, a type of ACL repair and, and there's some pluses and minuses. The pluses are, it makes the ACL much more stable. It's actually one of the better ways to cause, create stability there. But the cons are that the hamstring now is a little different. And so you may find differences in how you hip hinge, um, from one side to the other. Now, here's I want to ask you a couple questions because you said you, you hurt your hip hip afterwards. Uh, are you are you pushing yourself? Are you trying to consistently add strength? Is this is there is there something that you think you're doing that may be contributing to this? So at the time, I was actually uh, on a university level rower, so there was a lot of um, motion and then a lot of rotation to the right side as well. Um, but again, with that rowing motion, there's a lot of hip hinging every single stroke. So, okay. All right. So I'm, I'm glad you said that because that, that kind of changes things a little bit. Um, uh, because after a procedure like that, it can take a long time to make it kind of feel, uh, normal. And if you're at a high level of competition, you kind of don't have time. You need to compete. And if you're a rower, that's a very competitive sport. And yeah, there is a lot of posterior chain, right? A lot of hamstring back. Uh, biceps um, involved in, 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 in rowing. Um, so that definitely played a role. Now, my advice for you um, would be to focus entirely on unilateral exercises. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So everything you do for your hamstrings and your quads, everything you do for your lower body, I would do one leg at a time for a while. So split stance exercises, Bulgarian split stance squats, single lunges, step up, single leg deadlifts. Like that's where I would focus. And then I would also focus on uh, exercising uh, your lateral uh, stability, both uh, moving out and in. So mm -hmm. exercises that strengthen the muscles that pull the knees together and that pull them apart, uh, it's going to be real important uh, for you. I have an exercise that I love. Uh, I think we have it on our YouTube, but uh, a single leg deadlift where we use a slider. Uh, and you're just going to notice if your heel rotates in or out or if you can keep it nice and stable and locked as you hip hinge back. And just to kind of go through something really slow and methodical uh, and, and work on it as a corrective type of an exercise would be a great addition. Nick, do you have this option? Are you are you training for a sport right now or are you running in addition? Are you doing anything else or can you pretty much program however you want? Um. I mean, we're kind of in lockdown here. So I have my home gym. I have kettlebells, a couple dumbbells, TRX, stability ball. Um, limited on the weight, but obviously if it's single leg, it should be fine. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I'm pretty much in my basement. So can't really I, do I, too much. I love the the single leg deadlift, single leg, even like pistol squats using your suspension trainer. Mm. Uh, and the uh, I was doing that today. So for, you know, today we're training legs, and I heard a pop in my my leg, and when I were doing heavy lunges with Sal, and I instantly went to just all stability focused training. And so uh, the T or the TRX or suspension trainer is 
uh, phenomenal for this because you can just use it to help uh, stabilize you while you really focus on the movement uh, and depth and range of motion for that. So I love the single leg pistol squat with use, using the suspension trainer for support so you can really pay attention to your movement. And then I love the the single leg deadlift for, for your situation that you're in. Okay. And then how would you know when to, I guess, phase into traditional um, lifts again? I would, I would, I would want to see myself progress pretty well in strength before I go back to go test it with bilateral. Yeah. So I would, wherever your, you know, your strength, and by the way, movement is far more important. So the, 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 how, how well you move is much more important than how much you grab. So in other words, you could maybe right now you're a strong enough guy. You could go grab 80 pound dumbbells and single leg deadlift maybe. And maybe just cause you can do that. Your movement isn't as pretty when you move 40 pound dumbbells. So start with a weight that you move really, really well and controlled on both sides and then start to wait till you start to see yourself progress there before you go back and retest bilateral. Yeah. And it, I'll add this, uh, use a mirror and when you're, when both sides feel equal, okay. When both sides feel pretty equal in strength, movement, mobility, then it might be a good idea to progress, uh, to, to double leg, uh, exercises, but only, only when both sides don't, when there doesn't feel like there's a huge disparity. Do you have uh, MAPS Prime? Are you priming before your workouts, by the way? I got Prime Pro. Um, and then, yeah, I, I normally do a lot of 90-90 stuff before my workouts. And then I have a little bit of a protocol physio has kind of given me, but I, I'm finding that that one's not working Um anymore so okay maps prime pro is is, is perfect so uh, continue working within there take the tests within the program i would look at uh, i'd start at the feet um because once you have an imbalance on one side then moving up and down from that right so if it's in the hamstring then you're going to start to notice issues in the ankle and the hip and then if it doesn't get fixed and you continue to work out and push yourself it moves up and down the kinetic chain so it'll move all the way up to the shoulder even uh, oftentimes. So I would, I would go ankle foot. Then I would look, you're already doing hip. I think that's an obvious one, which is probably why you chose uh 90, 90. I would also look at the upper back and see if there's any differences there. If you've been squatting this whole time with both legs, don't be surprised if you've been compensating as high as your upper back. There may be an asymmetrical shift. Yeah. It's funny that you guys say that. Cause I do feel that like one shoulder is probably a little higher than the other. And there's definitely extra thoracic rotation on one side and mm. definitely my ankle is not the same on one side versus the other side so. you know so what happens is that as you work up the kinetic chain it it uh it zigzags back and forth so like the the reason why your left hip had issues is because the it's the hamstring on the right side and so then it'll bounce to the opposite side low back and then upper back it just kind of how if you, you can sure. you can follow it and, like that all and, the way up and, and you also said you rode a lot and rotated to the right so i'm assuming you're on a team and you're on one side and so you were always pulling in one direction yeah, for four years. Yeah, okay. So yeah. definitely, definitely work on uh, mobility. I would make that a focus. Some of my hardest clients to work with were clients that played a sport that favored one side. I'll never forget, I, I had a baseball player who pitched for years and years and years and years uh, with his right arm. And uh, boy, was there a difference in rotation in in him because he always trained one side. So so focus on that. That is going to play a role. That's probably going to play a bigger role than your surgery, believe it or not. I mean, uh, you're trained your body in one direction very intensely for four years, right? So, which is probably longer than it took you to, you know, recover from your ACL surgery. So I would focus on mobility, do unilateral exercises. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to add one more thing. Do unilateral for everything. Okay. Now that we're, you know, uh, it, ma it makes more sense now, especially when you consider, you know, you're rowing for four years. I would do everything one side at a time um, for a long time until things balance out. Okay. All right. I'll I'll uh, I'll stick to the unilateral. I've I've sprinkled it in here and there, but I've never stuck with it super long because I guess my ego's tried to take over to <laughs> lift those heavy weights. Nick, you will be so. you will be blown away at your progress. Give it at least six months. You will be blown away at All right. the first couple months are going to feel slow and what the heck's going on. After about two months, strength is really going to start to kick in, and then you'll start to see some newbie gains. Those those gains that you got when you first started working out 
because it's so different and new for your body. So do that for at least six months. All right. Well, I got all the time in the world. So <laughs> Awesome. Thanks for calling, man. Yeah, thank you, guys. No problem. All right. You know, it's funny. They, uh, I remember reading this article where I think it was in England. They were doing some kind of construction job, and they had uncovered some remains, uh, some old remains from medieval times, and oh. they, they were trying to determine who they were. Yeah. And when they looked at the skeletons, they saw- It was the longbow, man. Yeah. Right? They yeah. saw like one arm was, the bone was so much thicker. The spine was slightly twisted, mm -hmm. and there was this huge like discrepancy, and then they determined- these were long bowmen, which, mm. you know, back in those days, uh, that, that you, I mean, you're pulling that thing required hundreds of pounds of pressure uh, and strength. And that was, I mean, they were, they were uh, the world's number one army because of it. Um, and, and these guys, you could see it in their skeletons. Oh, yeah. So you train for four years rowing in one direction. It totally morphs your whole uh, biology. At Absolutely. That point. Yeah. So you got to balance it out. Uh, otherwise, you're going to run into problems.